So day one of the Oath Keepers trial is in the books. I sat through opening statements today and based on what I saw and based on what I heard, it really does look like Elmer Stewart Rhodes, the head of the Oath Keepers, and his co-defendants are going to go through some things. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So I was in court today for the opening statements in the Oath Keepers trial. There are five defendants being tried for seditious conspiracy, basically conspiring to violently overthrow the government, and they're charged with half a dozen other federal felonies. Here is today's reporting from Kyle Cheney of Politico. Headline, Oath Keepers trial begins in highest profile January 6 case to date. And that article begins, Leaders of the far-right Oath Keepers sought to end the country's history of peaceful transitions of presidential power in order to keep Donald Trump in office. Prosecutors contended on Monday, opening the most significant trial yet to emerge from the January 6 attack on the Capitol. Quote, they concocted a plan for an armed rebellion to shatter a bedrock of American democracy, said Assistant U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Nessler during opening arguments. And friends, what struck me as I watched the opening statements was just how much direct evidence of guilt, as opposed to circumstantial evidence of guilt, how much direct evidence of guilt the prosecutors have in this case. They have video of the defendants breaching the Capitol. They have video of the defendants inside the Capitol. They have video of some of the defendants bragging about, quote, taking the Capitol. You know, here is a flavor of just some of the evidence that the prosecutors told the jury they will see during the course of the trial. Defendant Kelly Meggs, he said before the Capitol attack, I'm going to go on a killing spree. Pelosi will be first. And after the attack, he said, quote, we looked for her. And to the attack, Kelly Meggs wore two patches on his combat attire. One was a patch associated with the Oath Keepers, and the other was a patch that said, I don't believe in anything. I'm just here for the violence. <clears throat> Defendant Thomas Caldwell. He said, quote, I'll start a civil war. Quote, let's take the damn capital. Quote, we stormed the place. Oh, and one of the other things Thomas Caldwell said that I think you have to put in the category of comic relief he was the one who was going to transport the weapons when necessary, but he didn't want to say he was going to transport the weapons. He decided he would speak in code when he would send out these written messages. So he said, um, I'll schlep the weps. You can't make that up, friends. I mean, who in the world could break that code? I'll schlep the weps. Yeah. I'll transport the guns, the firearms, the weapons. That's Thomas Caldwell. Defendant Jessica Watkins on video inside the Capitol saying, push, 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 get in there, referring to the Senate chamber. She's also on video saying, we stormed the Capitol, forced our way in to the Senate and the House. We Patriots took the Capitol. How about the leader of the Oath Keepers, Elmer Stewart Rhodes? He reportedly doesn't like his first name, so he is forever calling himself Stewart. So Elmer Stewart Rhodes said too many things in written messages and otherwise for me to summarize, but 
This is perhaps my favorite piece of evidence that the prosecutor included in opening statements with respect to Elmer. Elmer Stewart Rhodes sent some messages after the Capitol attack to some of the Oath Keepers. He said, quote, delete your self-incriminating comments. Delete your comments that incriminate other Oath Keepers and delete your comments that incriminate the Oath Keepers organization. Problem is, it looks like old Elmer didn't delete his comments instructing the Oath Keepers to delete their incriminating comments. A real criminal genius that Elmer Stewart wrote. So I'll be back in court tomorrow. And tomorrow evening, I will again do a video recapping what unfolded during the course of the trial day. But I'll tell you, based at this point only on the opening statements of the prosecution and the opening statements that I heard from the three defense attorneys who chose to give opening statements, um, it's a strong case. No such thing as a sure winner, but it's a strong case. And it looks like we are on the way to holding these so-called Oath Keepers accountable for their attack on our democracy. And that is as it should be. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.